Hey everyone, I'm Jeff Bacalar and I just watched the PlayStation 5 very, very tech heavy demo uh, led by the PS5 lead system architect Mark Cerny. It was filled with charts and numbers and I don't know what looked like the plans to destroy the Death Star, but nevertheless, PlayStation 5, it's going to be fast. And before I kind of break down exactly what was announced, first thing we all need to consider is that this presentation was pretty much meant for the GDC audience, for the game developer audience, people who can make use of very technical information about what the next console from Sony is capable of doing. That said, it was streamed to the entire planet, and I'm going to do my best job of sort of explaining what real world benefits we're going to be able to, to take out of all of these specs and numbers and charts and whatnot. So first, this was much more about the system architecture and what developers can use to their advantage and maybe a few details about how you and I will see those things played into real world gaming experiences. So if you're worried about just the core specs of what's under the hood in a PlayStation 5, here they are. You're talking about eight Zen 2 cores running at 3.5 gigahertz. The system is capable of 10.28 teraflops. It'll have 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM inside and a custom SSD holding 825 gigabytes. So for me, the biggest takeaway is that SSD that's going to be inside the PlayStation 5. It's a custom SSD and it's capable of doing read speeds at 5.5 gigabytes a second. So what does that mean? Well, in real world gaming situations, probably not going to have loading elevators or weird sort of parts where your character kind of squeezes through a narrow space. All that's done to kind of disguise the fact that the game is streaming up in the background because there's so much data available to developers on the fly, really not going to have to worry about streaming that in and disguising all that loading in the background. So imagine you'll be in a huge environment and no matter where you look, everything will sort of feel like it'll be loaded up instantaneously. That's kind of the best way to explain it. You probably won't have this feeling of claustrophobic areas that are maybe highly texturized and, and, and information dense in a small space, but instead have that freedom so that wherever your character looks or wherever your camera is facing, all of that stuff should theoretically be able to be streamed in in real time. That is a tangible thing you will notice right away, most likely when you're playing PlayStation 5 games. Mark Cerny also talked a lot about how patch updates will work in the future. And because this SSD drive is so fast and so customized to what game patching uh, uh, gets held up with, with traditional HDDs, Seems like we're not going to have to worry about these insane patch updates that not only when the patch is downloaded, then the system has to write a whole new file for the game. If you've played Modern Warfare or some current PS4 games, you know what I'm talking about. The wait times on some of these things are absolutely mind numbing. So hopefully this will mitigate, if not eliminate all of that moving forward. And talking more about expandable memory, it seems like you will be able to bring your own M2 drive into the PlayStation 5 through expandable storage. Now, there does seem to be a bit of a misunderstanding about just what exactly you'll be able to do in terms of buying your own drive, but it seems like you'll just have to look at a certain spec to see if it's compatible with that really quick read-write uh, spec that the PlayStation 5 is boasting. Most drives that are available right now seem to be able to hit that, or if not right now, they will be in time uh, when it comes to buying your own M2 drive and upgrading your storage down the road. A lot of the conversation in this presentation was about eliminating technical bottlenecks. So what does that mean? Basically means you don't want to get this console jammed up. You don't want to have any parts where information is traveling through the circuitry of this console to hit gaps where things are not flowing as seamless as possible. And that's basically what Mark Cerny outlined. He outlined a system that they've spent an awful lot of time on optimizing and making it as efficient as possible. So that is super comforting. Again, this was a very dense presentation that was not really meant to excite, uh, but more to open up the eyes and minds of developers who are making games for the PlayStation 5. 
He talked briefly about backwards compatibility too, and it seemed like they couldn't give us a concrete answer about what PS5 will be able to do in terms of backwards compatibility, but there was a graphic up that did show PS4 Pro and PS4 Legacy uh, uh, emulation sort of happening on board, and Mark Cerny did say that most, if not all, of the top 100 PS4 games would be playable day one. That is a little vague. It's tough to make a concrete determination about what exactly that means, but odds are you won't have a super difficult time playing backwards compatibility uh, out of the box. Hopefully that means for other consoles in the PlayStation Legacy as well, but for right now, we just don't have a lot of information on that. I mean, the most exciting thing is definitely that SSD speed. Mark Cerny talked about fast travel loading up instantaneously and games booting up in a matter of seconds. That, to me, is the most tangible, exciting information that we're getting out of PlayStation 5. And even our friends at uh, Digital Foundry are saying that on paper, that SSD speed uh, just seems a lot faster than what the Series X is promising right now. So that's about it. A lot of information coming out here, specifically aimed at people who make video games, not necessarily consumers like you and I, but nevertheless, some really cool stuff under the hood in PlayStation 5. We've got a lot to look forward to. No matter what console you're interested in, they're all going to kick some ass is what we're learning. So thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you thought about the presentation, that very, very techy and in-depth presentation. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you and your family are staying safe during these very strange times and we'll see you next time.